Hi, I'm Lee. I am a licensed esthetician and an independent senior consultant with LeBride Pure and Natural. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing acne and LeBride. First of all, what is acne? Acne is a combination of dead skin cells, oil, and bacteria that has been built up and it's clogging those pores, like where the little hair follicles are and things like that, and it's causing breakouts, pimples, whiteheads, all that kind of jazz. Anyone can develop acne. 80% um, is genetic. And then, of course, hormones have a big role in that too. Hormone, flu hormone fluctuations can also have a say in what type of acne you're going to get and all of that. Uh, first of all, there's different types of what they say acne. Now, being a licensed esthetician, I've always just said like pimple acne was always like this bigger thing. But we'll go ahead and just, just discuss the different forms of it. Whiteheads are the, um, they're clogged pores just right underneath the skin surface, okay? Blackheads are the clogged pores that actually um, somehow that it gets exposed to air, so then they turn black, which is interesting since they seem so much deeper to me than the whiteheads, but anyway. <laughs> Papules are small, tender, red or pink bumps. Then we have our pustules. These ones are fun, guys, but don't do it. I know you want to pick them. The pustules, which are similar to papules, but they have the pus coming out on the end of them. So yeah, keep your hands off. <laughs> then we have our nodules. Those ones are large and painful lumps deep under the skin's surface. Um, these ones are really hard to deal with, um, but they are, it's doable. Mild acne is usually considered the one with the whiteheads, um, blackheads, with few, few little breakouts, you know, pustules, papules, things like that. Then we've got our moderate acne, which is multiple, a lot more of the papules and pustules. Um, it's more confined to the face because then you go into your moderately severe acne, which has a large number of papules and may require medical intervention, but it can also show up on your chest and your back. And then we have our severe cases of acne. Those ones are the painful, deep pustules, large cysts, nodules, things like that, and usually always require some form of medical intervention. So what can cause more breakouts? Well, oily skin can produce more oil as a defense mechanism. Any skin can. You dry out your skin. Some people say that they have oily skin when in fact they're dry because they've been drying out their skin and the skin's getting pissed off and it's creating more oil, right? So yeah, you want to be really careful about that. So you want to balance out the loss of moisture in your skin. So you want to be just really careful about how many drying products that you're using on your skin. Overuse of products can cause irritations and pimples to develop. Using the wrong ones, it can cause drying, peeling, irritation, different things like that. Uh, picking and squeezing drives infection even deeper and spreads bacteria causing more breakouts as well as permanent scarring. So guys, really try not to pick. I know it's really hard. Use a tissue. Use it. There is a proper way to do it. Ask me. <laughs> or go see a licensed esthetician or even a dermatologist if you've got something going on there that is just horrid. But learn the proper way, please. Touching your face, that's a big one. <clears throat> Even in this day and age, I still touch my face uh, with everything going on. I constantly get a little pimple right here because I'm always going like this. Okay, so be really careful about that. Um, again, drying your skin out. Uh, stress. Try to remain calm. <laughs> Do the best that you can. Breathe. Ten deep breaths. Uh, hormones, of course, and your diet. Diet is a huge factor. <clears throat> so you want a clean diet as much as possible. Eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Drink a ton of water. Half your body weight in ounces a day, guys. That's the rule of thumb. 
okay? And then if you drink any coffee or other drink, caffeinated drink, things like that, you want to replace it with another six to eight ounces of water. And if you're dealing with a severe case of acne, drink your water, okay? Because your skin is a filter. It is, it's our largest filter. Things will come out, on, out of it. So that means it's doing its job, okay? Um, also, the other thing is um, you can limit your dairy, maybe even eliminate completely in some cases. That has shown to be very effective. Uh, increase your fiber along with your complex carbs, things like that. Never sleep on the same side of your pillow, okay? Your pillowcase, flip it, and once you've used both sides, change out your pillowcase, go wash that one, whatever you need to do. Sleep with your hair back off your face, a headband, something like that. That that can help as well. So yeah, so those are a few things that you can do to help conquer some acne situations. Now, how does Labrai and acne work? Well, Labrai is corrective and it actually works to pull all that deeply, deeply embedded debris from the pores, okay? Although this does not happen to everyone, but sometimes flushing can occur. Now, I'm not gonna go too much into flushing, but flushing is basically when you're getting more breakouts or you end up with flaky skin, a little um, say a flaky skin, more breakouts, things like that um, can happen. And this can go on just because of the fact that the product is doing its job. Like I said, Labrai is corrective. It doesn't happen to everybody, but it does. It it can happen, and this just shows that it's that it's working. So you want to give it some time because if it was, I, some people think it's an allergic reaction, and it's not. If it's an allergic reaction, most likely it's going to end up red and itchy. And honestly, I think there's only been like two percent since 1998 that has been um, allergic to Labrai. Don't quote me on that right now, but I think I read that somewhere. It's a very small um, case. So, but again, it doesn't always happen to everybody. It's just what it is doing is eliminating your impurities because again, the skin is a full filter. So yeah, I will maybe do a video on that sometime. So how do you determine which products to use? Ask me <laughs> or go to my site. There is a skin analysis um, uh, thing that you can do on there, which is actually, I was really surprised. It's actually really accurate. Um, I tested it with 10 people that I know personally that I've done skin analysis on, and it, it was really accurate. But I am more than happy to do a skin analysis for you to help you along the way. Um, you want to ask yourself a few questions. How long have you been having the breakouts? This can determine how long it's going to take for your skin to get corrected, okay? Um, also, of course, your diet. What are you doing on the inside? Um, what are you currently using for skincare? Are you drying out your skin too much? Things like that. There's a few questions that you really want to ask yourself. Are you oily? Are you blotting your face several times a day? So... That's why you really need to be, um, you should just really just talk to me <laughs> or uh, someone else in Labrai, something, because you need to figure out which, which product line, which product you need out of the line to help you um, with the quickest results. Uh, now, one thing with our, with our Labrai products is they're completely safe to use with any prescription medication that you are um, advice to take for your acne. Um, of course, if your doctor tells you not to, of course, follow your doctor's advice, but ours are completely safe to use with um, any of the treatments that are given to um, someone that's already going to see a dermatologist or um, someone to prescribe things for their skin acne. All right, so there is uh, sets available um, acne lines so that that way you're not trying to pick and piece everything together. Um, you want to, uh, for like sporadic hormonal acne, eh, 
for just about any of the acne, um, you always want to use your cleanser twice a day. And it's usually either the deep pore cleanser or the oil control cleanser that is recommended for acne clients. Um, your Clear Away, which is a 2% salicylic acid, but it works invisibly to help control bacteria and heal the blemishes without the dryness because it has some other um, botanicals in there and it really is nice and you can't tell it's on the face. So you can use it during the day. Um, then there is the Clarifying Clay Mask and that one's recommended mainly for a real oily skin. It's a wonderful mask though. I used it on a pimple that I had right here and I picked it. <laughs> I didn't follow my own advice, um, but I left it on for about 20 minutes, and I kid you not, six hours later, you couldn't even tell it was there anymore. It was amazing. So that really heals up the blemishes, too, and then we've got our facial mask, um, which is also will give you a facelift in the process, um, but that's more for a drier skin. Um, rather than an oily skin. I mean, you can use it, any skin type's good for it, but if you're like an oily skin battling acne, I would definitely recommend the Clarifying Clay Mask over the facial mask. So, anyhow. Uh, but the clay is really healing. It draws out deep impurities. And again, it heals the blemishes, um, both under and um, on top of the skin. So it gets under and on top of it pulls those blemishes. Facial mask draws out the impurities. It's great to put, um, they're both really good to put on a, as a spot treatment on the acne or, or the, the infection itself, the blemish. Um, you can use that overnight. You can use the clear way first and then put either the facial mask or the clay mask on top and just let it sit overnight. Okay. And then Probably depending on the individual, I probably wouldn't recommend a freshener depending on the severity of the breakout because um, it just, that can cause a little more activity going on in your skin and you don't want, you're trying to limit the activity going on. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, you want to cleanse twice a day. Use the clear away. Uh, and use that as a, either, depending on how much acne you've got, you can either use it all over your face or as a spot treatment morning and night. Um, so, yeah, you want to, but the one thing with the clear way is you don't want to use the aloe or a moisturizer on over it because it will dilute the clear way. So that's why I usually say use it as a spot treatment. That way you can use your hydration on the rest of your skin, your normal hydration. Nightly cleanse. Um, use your clay or your facial mask nightly. Now, if you're doing um, the, the spot treatment, of course, and then like three times a week, use it all over your face. Use one or the other all over your face, one of those masks. Um, but And then twice a week, use your rejuvenating facial pill, which is one of our exfoliators. Now, you don't want to use the exfoliator on the same day that you are going to use the full mask. Don't do that. It's too much for your skin. So it's better just to alternate. Like the two days a week that you're using your rejuvenating fish pill, don't use the mask. So, because you want to exfoliate. It's going to help get that dead skin off your face. You know, because we lose... As we age, we lose our cell turnover. It doesn't turn over as quick as when we were in our teens. So, um, and then of course there's the cystic acne. Um, that one is more challenging. I would recommend pretty much the same process, but I would also recommend using the Smooth and Firm Eye Repair Gel all over the face for the first five days because that really helps to minimize the inflammation. It's amazing how well it works uh, for that. So that's what you'd want to do with that. Um, and then at night, you'd want to steam your face. Now be careful, you don't want to burn yourself. So if you don't have a steamer, a lot of us don't. <laughs> you can, if they're just sporadic, 
little breakouts, you can get a hot washcloth. Careful again, don't burn yourself. And just hold it, cup it over the area. Or what I like to do is I like to boil a pot of water, remove it from the heat on the stove, let it set, let it release its steam for a little bit. Like, I don't know, a couple minutes. Get a towel, hold your face over the pot, like about that far up, if you can. You know, even sit down at the table, you know, and just go like this. You can just put the, make like a tent out of the towel and it will steam your face and help to pull and draw out those impurities quicker for you so we can cleanse them off your skin, get them out of there and heal it up quicker. So, yeah. And once your skin cools completely, then you can apply the clear way and, and such in your mask if you're using the spot treatment like that. So there you have it. That's my acne advice, recommendations. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. If you're catching this on Facebook, you can comment below or message me direct. If you're catching this on YouTube, in the description down below, I have my links. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, I am here for you. And oh, and of course, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more from me, subscribe. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.